This is the last lecture in phase diagrams. One thing we know about nature is that nature can be complex, and a binary explanation of a system might not be appropriate. Now, we could add a third dimension if we move to ternary diagrams instead of using binary. And so that's what the purpose of this lecture is, is to describe for you and give you an example of how to use a ternary phase, phase diagram to explain a basaltic melt. Here, in, in our binary system, we went from diopside to anorthite with a, what did we have? We had, a, we had a phase diagram, right, that looked like, oh, that was a little sloppy, but it went from diopside to anorthite, and there was a solidus, and then there was two liquidus surfaces, and a eutectic point. Now, this diagram is how I want you to visualize this limb of this ternary diagram, going from diopside to anorthite, with at 1274, a eutectic point right here. But what we've done to complicate this diagram is we've actually added another binary phase diagram on this axis that goes from anorthite to forsterite. And down here at the bottom, we've added a whole nother phase diagram, binary phase diagram, that goes from diopside to forsterite. And by combining these three binary systems, we can actually interpolate between them to create a full ternary diagram. It, we look at the binaries on the side view, whereas we look at the ternary from the bird's eye view, looking down on a surface. Each of these dashed dotted lines here, these are temperature contours. And we read them just like we've used elevation contours. So, for example, this is our 1600 degrees C, and we're going to go down in temperature to 1500 degrees C heading towards a thermal valley. So here it's hot, here it's 1400, here it's 1400. Between them, there's a cold point. And this colder line, which we're gonna label a thermal valley, that thermal valley is known as a cotectic. And a cotectic is um, a temperature, or is a place where two phases are crystallizing. The cotectic is where two phases crystallize. Here's another cotectic, this dark line here, this is a thermal valley, and here's another cotectic. And where the three thermal valleys all go together to that point right here, that is the ternary eutectic. Ternary eutectic. And at the ternary eutectic, three phases are crystallizing anorthite, diopside, and forsterite. And so we have just added, by adding three together, we can describe how three different mineral phases can all crystallize together. This is much more powerful than the binary, and it's a little more complicated. My students struggle with a couple ideas. The first is going to be how we're in bird's eye view, we're looking down on a surface. And we need to be able to visualize that surface in three dimensions. And if you can just you know, see that here's 1400 line, and that is like 1400 here, and then we go down towards the thermal valley, we're going down towards the thermal valley as we're headed towards the cotectic, and then we continue to roll downhill. So let's just say, for example, we had a magma, and the magma is right here, and it's at 1500 degrees C. Well, we're above Here's the 1500 contour, and so if we're at 1500 degrees C here, the actual temperature of crystallization, the liquidus surface here, is above, is between 1500 and 1400, so it won't crystallize anything until maybe 1420. But as soon as we hit 1420 on a, on a cooling pathway, we're going to crystallize something, and we're going to crystallize whichever end of the triangle we're closest to, not separated by a valley. So in this case, we would crystallize anorthite and we would drive away from, the composition of the melt would drive away from end member anorthite down topography until we get to the cotectic. We would start to crystallize forsterite at that point, and by doing that, we would then continue to cool going down the thermal valley of the cotectic until we reach the eutectic point, where the remainder of the magma will crystallize until the last gasp of melt goes away, and then we would disappear down into the screen below the solidus as, we as the rock continues to cool. That would be a descriptive path 
for how the composition changes. We need to do that now actually in practice. Again, read the textbook if this is like really causing you to stumble because I guarantee you it is complicated and there are students that struggle with this a lot. Hopefully this example will, will help you. We're going to do a basaltic composition. Let's do a basaltic melt composition and we're going to do cooling again. I've purposely done cooling every single time hint to my students, I'll probably do melting on an exam. And our composition is going to be diopside 20, anorthite 30, forsterite 50. First step is finding where that bulk rock composition or bulk magma composition is. And you do that on a ternary diagram, diopside 20. Well, here's diopside 100. We need to go down, down, down. Here's diopside 30. Here's diopside 20. This line right here. And we're forced to write 50. I think that here's the 50 line for forced to write, right? Because here's the 100 point for forced to write. So we're going to go at where the 50 meets the 20. That's our bulk magma composition. Our T1 will be at 16. 50 degrees C. What is the temperature where the first crystal will form at this point? Well, it's at 1600 because that's where the dot sits on the temperature contour. So at T1, 1650, we actually have a percent liquid of 100. We have a percent solid of zero. We have a, uh, oops, let's see, we've got to do comp, right? We gotta do our composition. We got our composition liquid. Well, it's the same as what we started with. Di20, An30, Forsterite 50, and the composition of the solid is not applicable. So we have just started. We are well on our way. The very first crystal that forms is gonna form at 1600. So let's actually go ahead and talk about that as our T2. And so our T2 is when we're gonna first hit the liquidus. So I'll say that here, first hit liquidus, which means our very first crystal forms. And that is gonna be where it hits the contour at 1600 degrees C. Percent liquid, percent solid, composition liquid composition solid well it's our very first crystal so we're still at just about a hundred we're at just about zero compositional liquid hasn't changed much because we've just pulled out one crystal so it's di20 an third 30 fo 50, but the composition of the solid is our first actual real unknown. We are on the big limb of this ternary that is closest to the Forsterite apex. We are on the thermal hill, the thermal mountain of Forsterite. We have not yet hit a cotectic that could precipitate anything else. And so since we're on this slice of the pie, the pizza pie, then we will be crystallizing Forsterite 100. If we pull Forsterite 100 out of the melt, we have to then push the melt away from this apex. And so what we're going to end up doing is drawing our tie lines. And the tie lines have to be, we're going to draw a straight line that goes from this Forsterite. Oh, it's hard to draw a straight line here. Use a ruler. That's going to be the most important line that you draw on this diagram. Have it be perfectly straight, connecting from this apex, going through our composition point, and hitting the cotectic. But at this point, we're still sitting at that dot. We haven't moved it all in this direction, which is the direction we're going to be headed. Uh, so nothing complicated has yet happened. Let's make something happen. Let's have now, the magma is going to cool from 1600 to... 1500. So here what this is T2 and here and it's also T1 and now we have cooled to 1500 and so we have actually moved to this spot right here which is a dot along the tie line between the four stride apex and our bulk rock composition 
this is T3. T3. We'll do it up here. T3 is at 1500 degrees. Man, don't be sloppy. T3 is at 1500 degrees Celsius. We need to know percent liquid, percent solid, composition, liquid, composition, solid. And we're going to need to use the lever rule here for the very first time. The lever rule is not any more complex in this system than it was in the binary. What I want you to do is put in uh, A at the forced right apex. We're going to put a B in at our tipping point. That's a little hard to see, isn't it? Let's put it, I'll put it right here. And we're going to put a C, and we're going to label that little C3. And with our lever rule, we're going to be able to figure out the percent liquid and percent solid at each point. And so the percent liquid is this big line here. And so the percent liquid is a, the length of AB over AC. And the length of C to B, we're still hot. It should be a shorter line. And it is. BC over AC is our percent solid. So I've measured this in millimeters on my sheet of paper. And our percent liquid is 82 over 104, which gives a percent liquid of, what is that going to be? That's about 80%, right? And the other one is 22 over 104, and that equals about 20%. So that's our percent liquid and our percent solid. The composition of our liquid is the point on this graph relative to our three N members. And so this is going to be diopside 10, diopside 20, diopside 24. It's going to be forced to write, let's see, that's 190, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 38. Yeah, that's pretty good. Forced to write 38, and it's also anorthite. 38. The composition of the solid, well, we're still in the domain of forced right, so it has to be forced to write 100. Again, take a look at the textbook if, if this stumped you, but I, ho I hope it was making s sense to you. Let's do another composition before we do anything fancy. Let's have uh, T4 be at 1400. See T4 at 1500. If you want to, pause the video right here and go ahead and do it on your own and then check your answer um, with me because I'm just going to keep working along right here. We have our A. We have our B. Now there's more crystallization that's occurred by the time you get to 1400. So we're actually going to label C4 right here. So our percent liquid is AB over AC. Our percent solid is now B to C4 over AC. And that number should have increased. On my sheet of paper, I have that length as 43 over 126. And like a knucklehead, I did not actually calculate that out. Why did I not do that? I can't do that during my video. Well, you could you could double check. What is that? That's like, um, like 66%, and that's like 33%. Ooh doing that in my head right now instead of with a calculator. That makes me feel pretty bad. What is our composition liquid and our composition solid? Our composition solid, I hope you got it right, is still FO100. That's going to change once we hit the cotectic, but for now we're still in the forced right domain. Our composition liquid should become more poor in forced to right. And at this point right here, we are going to be at around diopside, here's 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, diopside 28. We're going to be at forced to right 10, 24. You sum the two, that's going to have to be anorthite 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, about 48. Does that sum? Yeah, it does. And 48. 
Okay, so you're, I think you're getting the idea how we're going to do these little, the C's are going to be progressively getting closer to the eutectic. Now, now let's do the actual complication of the ternary. And the complication of the ternary is we're going to hit the cotectic, we're going to change the composition of the melt. So T5 is right here, 1390. We have just reached the cotectic. T3 is at 1300 degrees C. We have reached the cotectic. And we have just reached the cotectic. We have just crystallized the very first crystal of anorthite. We're gonna need to put in our percent liquid, percent solid, composition, liquid, composition, solid. Because we've only crystallized like one crystal of anorthite, actually our process is identical to what we've done right now. Why did I put that as a three? That is obviously T5. I'm gonna put a dot in here. I'm gonna label that T5. We're gonna label C5, and our process will be the same as what we have done. Our percent liquid is AB over AC. I have that as 83 over 143, which is 58%. Our percent solid is B uh, to C5 over AC, which is equal to 60 over 143 on my sheet of paper, which is about 42%. And then the composition of the solid is still forced to write 100, but it's almost not anymore. It's like forced to write 99.99999 anorthite 0 0.000001 because we've just added the very first crystal of anorthite to the melt. The composition of the melt is where we're sitting right here, and so that is going to be diopside 30, anorthite 54. And forced to write about 16. Okay, so now let's do the fun stuff. What ends up happening now is we're gonna drive away in this direction down the cotectic thermal valley, and we're gonna change the amount of crystallization that occurs. So we're gonna go and we're gonna start crystallizing, and we're gonna drop to 1280 degrees. Here we go. This is T. Six, so T six is at uh, what did I just say? Twelve eighty. Twelve eighty degrees C. We are crystallizing two phases, two phases forming, and we have to draw a new line in. Here's the new line. We're going to draw a new line at T6 that connects T6 through our bulk composition. And it's gonna strike this limb of our triangle about here. So again, this is a little harder for me to do on my tablet, but I'm gonna put a line in like so. Oh, good, that actually turned out pretty good. And we're gonna label some points on this. We're gonna label, we have a new, um, we're gonna go A, six, B is the same, and we're gonna go C, six. This is how we set up the lever rule now. It's a different line, and that's important. Percent liquid, percent solid, composition of liquid, composition of the solid. We are gonna measure the length of that line for our lever rule, and and it's the same. It's the same way. Okay, it's AB over AC. So da, da, da. I have this as fifty six over one one twenty two. That is this length right here. From here to here is fifty six, and the whole length on my sheet of paper is one hundred and twenty two millimeters. That gives me a percent of liquid 
of 46%, whereas the percent solid is from C6 to B. And that is 66 over 122, which is about 54%. The composition of the liquid is the dot right here. And I have the comp that that's going to be a composition of liquid of di. So here's so let's see. Okay, we're going to have di. Here's 90, 80, 70, 60, 50. We'll say 41. And it's anorthite 49. And that's going to make it be forsterite 10. It's about right. And the composition of the solid, this is the new bit. It's the intersection right here. So that is our, this, this intersection point right here is the comp solid T6. And I have it as forced to write 87 anorthite 13. Right, so anorthite 100. Anorthite 13 is here, force to write 100, force to write 87 is right here. So it's the intersection of our new tie line with that axis. Okay, I know this is taking a little while, but it's better to be thorough and make sure you understand it than to rush too much. Let's now explain. And so what will end up happening is, as we get progressively closer to our ternary eutectic, we have to draw in new lines like that. Uh-huh. So that could be like a T uh 7. And we could do another one T8. But now let's go ahead and do what happens at the ternary. So what what T um well, I guess we'll go T that's too light of a color. Let's go darker green. So T7 is going to be at 1270 Degree C, we have just arrived to our thermal minimum and our invariant point, our ternary eutectic. At the ternary eutectic, we are going to start crystallizing a third phase. So all three, we'll say this, all three minerals are crystallizing. The magma wants to disappear and have the whole rock. I mean, it's super cold. It's 1270. So at this ternary tactic, we've just reached it. We need to do everything. We got percent liquid, percent solid, composition liquid, composition solid. We're going to have to draw a new line that goes from this point through this point. Is going to intersect our limb over here. So put that in. Boom. Put it. This is our actual. Get rid of that. That's not T7. That was just a demonstration I was doing. Here is our actual T7 uh, composition that's forming right when we reach the eutectic. Our percent liquid is going to be C7 B. A7, and it's just the lengths. I have re me measured this out. Our percent liquid on my sheet of paper is 48 millimeters divided by 123 millimeters, giving me 39% liquid just when we reached the eutectic. The amount of solid is 73 millimeters divided by 123 millimeters. 123 millimeters is the length of the green line I've just put in, and that is going to be 61% solid. The composition of the liquid is this point right here, which is Di50. It is An44. And it is Fo6 or 7. And this has to add to 100, so we'll put it in as 6. And then the composition of the solid that's forming just when we reach the ternary is right here. And what is that? That spot right there is going to be uh, anorthite 28, forced to write uh, 72. 
what did I say, anorthite 28. And it's actually also going to have diopside 0 0.00001. The very first diopside crystal is going to form when we just arrive to that ternary eutectic. And as we continue to crystallize, we could do another color. Uh, should we do bright pink? That might be too much. Let's go purple T8. T8 is going to be also at 1270 degrees C. And we are going to depart eutectic. Departing eutectic, we're going to be right here. That is C8. We have the same, we'd have to have the same tie line, but we don't need the same tie line anymore because we've just sat here for thousands of years and that 39% liquid is now gone away. So our percent liquid when we are just departing from the eutectic is essentially zero. The last drop is disappearing. Our percent solid is about 100 and the composition of that liquid is still the composition of that exact dot. So we could go to what we did before, DI50, AN44, FO6. The composition of the solid is our composition of our starting material, which is right there at B. Oh, this is starting to get messy, right? I hope you kept yours clean. It's going to be our starting material right here, di 20 a and 30 fo 50 at all colder temperatures than 1270 it's just a solid rock disappearing down into the page from our bird's eye view to colder and colder temperatures below the solidus well i hope that helped if you need more practice on your own use that textbook